and work and cook with this ginormous thing called a spaghetti squash. A Santana squash banana. <laughs> or at least that's what I like to say when I'm working with a spaghetti squash. So, I'm Morgan, I'm a registered dietitian, and spaghetti squash is probably one of my absolute favorite vegetables because it has a ton of vitamins. Um, it's a good way to get in veggies without actually really even noticing that you're getting in veggies. So my favorite way to serve it is actually with like a red sauce over top um, and maybe even some like beet bowls or whatever your, you know, plant-based or meat type of protein is and some red sauce, spaghetti squash, it's good to go. Now I will say the hardest part is in cutting this bad boy. You can cook it a little bit in the microwave if you puncture it first, that'll help soften it up. I did not do that today, um, so we'll see how this goes. And the other thing when you're cutting a spaghetti squash is have a ginormous cutting board and also a sharp ginormous knife and that's going to make things a heck of a lot easier too. So you're going to want to cut it lengthwise, meaning not this way, but all the way up and down. And so I like to kind of find where like the natural resting place is um, because that's going to be the most stable point. And then I just kind of start by working my way around. Now, some squashes are a little bit more doable than others. I've definitely cut my finger cooking before, so I feel like I'm just always a lot slower since then because I'm trying to be extra cautious. Now when you get to this bottom part, sometimes you can really hammer it down. Uh, at least that's what I like to do. And that really helps to get things moving along. You can see I'm already more than halfway through. The hardest part is this outer layer. The middle is pretty hollow. So once you get through that um, big like shell, skin, or the rind, whatever it is that you want to call it, same, same if you ask me. So it's actually getting pretty tough here. I should have timed it. Because even though this is the hardest part, I still don't think it takes more than five minutes usually. Now I got the knife kind of jammed in there. And also it's going to be so much easier when you do it at home because you don't have to talk. And so you can focus a little bit more. At least that's what I like to think. So sometimes when it gets really close to the top, we're not quite there yet. Oh, because I didn't do the side on the top yet. Um, but when you get really close to the top, sometimes you can actually pull it apart. And I find that that works really well um, up close to where like the stem would be. Gosh, this one's like super tough. Usually they're not this tough. It's like a workout and at the same time get your shirt all squashy. Hoof da, let me tell ya. It might also be helpful when you do this to put on some good jams to listen to in case it does take a little longer. At least you got good listening music. Okay, I'm just gonna get my shirt all dirty here. I can feel that this is probably going to be helpful. I don't know why it's being such a pain in the butt. It never fails whenever you try and do a video. <laughs> Anything takes a heck of a lot longer. And I could fake it and have it like, you know, pre-cut. I've seen people do that, but then you don't get a real gym. Like, you know, just of what it can be like. So this is definitely real. In the flesh spaghetti squash. I mean, I literally have shit schmutz schmutz all over me. And we haven't even cracked it open. Well, well, well. So I think what I might do is start to saw this way. Because for some reason it's almost like it's not ripe.
usually doesn't create that much of a mess. Interesting. About all I gotta say. I think that uh, this is probably the spaghetti squash that I've annihilated the most. Hmm. So we might have to take a little quick break. <laughs> and I'll get back to you when I get this bad boy cut. Shouldn't take too much longer. sharpest knife which is interesting yeah I don't actually that knife is so different than the other one huh I don't even know where that knife came from very interesting so again you work with the sharp knife and everything becomes so much easier should have had this one from the get-go it's like cutting through all this stuff that I was struggling with, like night and day. the problem was that these inside seeds were really really um, connected. I'm not totally sure what that means but that's definitely part of what happened. So now that we have this bad boy cut open, grab a bowl, grab a spoon. You see that there's like these inside seeds that look, I literally am going to have to shower after this, these inside seeds that look like pumpkin seeds. So those, um, that whole like inside part, we don't want to eat. So we're actually going to scoop it out. I like to kind of, like a, the spoon is a knife, cut down first. And work your way all the way around. So you're scooping out, or you're essentially carving out what would be like a bowl. And then once you have it all loose, and kind of cut out, you can use the spoon to literally scoop everything up. And you can see that I'm just kind of letting it stand up in this bowl here. But you can hold it. I mean, you can do it in a plate. I just think the bowl is a lot easier because it catches all the mess. And that's actually a good tidbit. Whenever you're cooking, always have kind of a bowl next to you. And that way you don't have to go running back and forth to either wherever you keep your compost or where, if you're throwing it away, to the garbage can. So it makes things a heck of a lot easier. A lot easier than cutting the squash was, well, let me tell you. Okay, so once I have this um, scooped out, optionally you can add olive oil. So you could do a, a tablespoon to an olive oil, drizzle it in the middle and rub it around. Um, and then I'm going to bake it at 425 degrees Fahrenheit for about an hour. And I'll bring it out and let you know and show you kind of what it's going to look like and what you can look for so you can make the best and most delicious spaghetti squash. And 
we're back. So the spaghetti squash just came out of the oven and it actually only took like 45 minutes. Um, I think because I had it on the convection bake. So I've honestly had anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour. It really depends on uh, how big the squash is and then also like the proximity of the heat, how good your oven is, all that kind of stuff. That's a good range. So I knew it was done because the outside started to get kind of brown. I was like, huh, let me try this out. So when I'm talking about the forking, so I'm gonna try and hold this, it literally just came out, so it's hotter than Hades. So the forking means that when you have, you start to pull down and you start to get all of these little tendrils, these shreds of the spaghetti squash that look like spaghetti noodles. And when those are nice and tender, like you could even, you could try it or you, you mean, uh, practice is how you know, but it's like, it's soft, like a noodle, an al dente noodle, because you don't want it to like cook to complete oblivion and be super mushy, because then it's going to create a lot more water, and it's then going to be um, harder for that sauce to kind of get in there. So that's how you know it's done, and then you can wait for it to cool, scoop out all the goods out, put it in a bowl, and then serve it with your favorite sauce, and you are good to go. That is how you work with spaghetti squash. Oh yeah, thanks for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, and catch a new video every week.